so today we are going to continue with our class on hashing okay so yesterday we had seen the basics of hashing what is hashing what is a hash table what is a key and what you mean by a slot okay what you mean by the value of the hash so today we are going to continue with the important concept in hashing known as collision so before we continue we'll just revise what we saw yesterday yesterday we saw that hashing means retrieving storing or searching for data in a database okay the database in hashing is implemented in the form of a hash table which is nothing but a one dimensional array okay so this array as you know is always indexed from starting from zero okay so each array index the location of each array index is also known as a slot in hashing slot or bucket so these all are the slots in the hash table in each array or each hash location two values are stored one is the index value and the second is the key value so key is nothing but your data the key could be integer floating character any but remember that your array can store only one type of data at a time so you cannot store different types of data at the same time okay so you have declared your hash table as a integer then you can only store integer data so this is what we had seen till yesterday then we had seen different types of hash functions okay so we had seen that there is a division method there is a folding method interpolation method middle square method there were different ways of computing the hash function now also told you that the division method is the most common way of computing the hash function okay and uh, also we saw the characteristics of a good hash function so all this we had seen in yesterday's lecture so today we are going to continue with one important topic like i told you known as collision we had briefly discussed about what is a collision yesterday okay i had given you an example of how in real life in a traffic accident uh, uh, a collision happens when two vehicles reach at the same spot at the same time and they collide they hit each other so in the same way when you try to store data more than one data in the same location then we call it as collision okay so you can just read this definition so basically this definition tells you if a collision happens what is the process for resolving it okay so the process for resolving a collision is known as a collision resolution so we need some method of finding where to place the second data that has arrived we need to store it in some other location because if we try to store it in the same location as the first data then a collision occurs therefore the systematic method for placing the second item in the hash table when two items hash to the same slot is known as collision resolution so basically today we will see what is a collision and the different ways of solving the collision which is also known as collision resolution
so these are the different ways in which you can re uh, resolve the collision in hashing so there are two main methods open addressing and the second is chaining under open addressing there are more sub methods the first one is linear probing then quadratic probing double hashing so these are all open addressing methods okay and then we have another method known as chaining so basically we are going to study four methods linear probing quadratic probing double hashing and chaining okay but you need to remember that the first three methods come under a heading known as open addressing techniques so in the exam if you are told to write a explain open addressing techniques and you have to briefly explain all these three methods okay each of these methods could come on their own for 5 to 8 marks so please pay attention i hope you are having your notebook and pen ready and you need to write it down as i am explaining to you basically it's like a problems that you have to solve when a collision happens how to resolve it okay so till yesterday we have seen in yesterday's lecture how to hash a value how to insert a keys using the hash value and in yesterday's examples we i took care to uh, make sure that there was no collisions happening okay so today's insertions will involve collisions and then we will see how to solve those using all these four methods so let's look at the first method we are looking at the first method that is linear probing so the main idea of linear probing is whenever collision occurs i scan down the array one cell at a time so this array is nothing but your hash table okay so i scan down the hash table one cell at a time looking for a empty cell so wherever the collision has occurred from that cell i go to the next cell i check whether there's a free slot if there's a free slot i insert the data there okay otherwise i keep going down one slot at a time looking for a free slot the moment i find a free slot i insert the data there so we will see with an example how it works so you can note down this example we are going to insert this keys 89 18 49 58 and 69 into a hash table of size 10 and the hash function is given as this h of key equal to key mod m just go down this they will start solving when you start solving use this hash function and find out the hash value for so if you find out the hash value for 89 the hash value for 89 is 9 so your first of all your hash table you are going to draw your hash table it's given in the question that the hash table is of size 10 so you're going to draw your hash table starting from index 0 all the way to m minus 1 so from 0 to 9 you will have your hash table 
all the indexes then insert your key 89 at the index 9 or the hash value 9 so your 89 will be inserted here okay take the next key find a hash value the hash value for that will be 8 so as long as the slot is free you are going to insert okay only when a collision occurs then we are going to apply this collision resolution method known as linear probing okay otherwise you are going to keep inserting as long as there is no collision so insert the next key that is 18 now compute the hash for 49 now when you compute the hash for 49 you must have seen that you get the same hash value okay what you had got for 89 and the hash value that you get is 9 now, when you go to insert this 49 here obviously this slot is not free okay this slot is not free so you need to find the location for this key okay so what we do is we consider this okay pay attention we consider this wherever the collision has occurred okay so from that point onwards we start scanning the array downwards okay now since this is the last index this one is the last index we consider this thing as a circular array so when I'm going down, that means I'm going back towards the top because this is the last index. So I go up like this. Okay. When I go up, I check whether this slot here is free. This slot here is free. If it is free, it is empty. Then I will insert 49 there. Okay now since this hash was again i'm repeating first we computed the hash then there was a collision so when a collision happens we are solving the collision using linear probing so what linear probing does is it scans the next location below this so we were at index 9 so i would have gone to the next index now since this is the last index 9 is the last index in the hash table. Consider this like a circular array and you come back to the first index. Okay. Check whether this first index is free or in other words empty. If it is empty, you will insert this key there. So now here 49 will get inserted. Okay. What if, okay, what if when you were inserting this was also not free suppose there was some value okay so you, a collision had occur, occurred here okay you go in a circle and you come here and you, when you check there is some data here then you would have gone to the next location below it and you would have checked for whether this is free then you would have inserted 49 here Clear? So you keep going down one location, or in other words, you increment the index by one every time you find the slot is not empty. And you have to keep doing it till you find one empty slot. And when you find one empty slot, the key will be inserted in that slot. So now, in our case, we found this as a collision. I went in a circular fashion here. And this slot was free. So since that slot was free, I insert 49 there. Is it okay? I hope you understood. So similar way, you take the, now you have already inserted 49. So you go for the next key. Take 58. So now when you are inserting 58, again there is a collision. So can you tell me where will 58 get inserted? 
in which index you have to apply whenever collision is occurring you are going to apply linear probing try out 58 and then 69 then i'll give you the answer insert both 58 and 58 will get inserted here and then you can try out 69 Okay. If you have understood, then this is the way it will get inserted. So yes, correct. Fifty-eight will go there, and sixty-nine will go at index two. Okay. So, for those of you who have not understood, I just quickly tell. See here, this results in a collision when you try to insert 58. There's a collision here. Okay, so you go down here. You check whether this slot is free. It's not free, so you go again here. Check whether this slot is free. It's not free, so go down. Check whether this slot is free. Yes, this slot is free. So 58 will be inserted here. Okay. Then you compute for the next key. So next key is 69. So the hash value for that is 9. So again, when you try to insert, there will be a collision. So you go up in a circular fashion because this is the last index. When you go up. You check whether this slot is free, not free. So come down here, check whether the slot is free, not free. Come down here and check whether this slot is free. Yes, it is free. So you will insert sixty-nine there. Okay, is it okay? Any doubts about this method? Okay. Uh, what is the any disadvantage or anything you're noticing here with regards to the characteristics of a hash function that we have studied yesterday? Any observation that you have with regards to what we have done this insertion, insertion of this data using linear probing whenever there's a collision. What if all the indexes were filled? Uh, yeah, it is. Yes, when all the indexes are filled, it's just like an array, no? It's an array, so you can't insert more data inside. It has to go through each and every element. Correct? Yeah, Siddhi Lakshmi. We may get more collision. Yes. So yesterday we had seen that in one. one of the points that are mentioned about the good characteristics of a good hash function that the keys should get distributed uniformly okay in other words the keys should get spread whenever you apply the hash value the keys should get spread now what is happening is this hash you can see here in all these keys the keys are different five different keys and the data values are five different But the hash values that we are getting here are just two values, eight or nine. Okay, the hash values that you are getting here is just two values, eight or nine. So all the data that is being entered into the hash table actually has to be stored only in these two locations. Okay, but 
by using linear probing we i have already explained you how it works so we are inserting this remainder of this key is 49 58 69 below this okay so it gets inserted below this means this is in a circle no so when it's in a circle this is below that so what is happening is it is getting clustered the data is getting clustered meaning it's getting inserted close to each other below this original location okay now what is happening is since they are having the same hash values this data is not getting spread across the table okay it should normally get spread but it's leading to some phenom uh, phenomenon known as primary clustering so in primary clustering what is happening all the keys that are having the same hash value are getting inserted close to each other in the same end they are getting grouped together in the table so you can see here one end of the table one of end of the table that is here is not getting used okay but at this end of the table this end of the table and this three location this is getting used because this data that was supposed to this data was originally supposed to be inserted here in these two locations so because of linear probing it got inserted here okay so whenever you use linear probing one thing you will notice is if the data hashes to almost the same values every time okay one or two values are only you get all the time then this phenomenon will happen wherein your data will get starting getting grouped so you can think of a continuity here these are the first two values this is the third fourth fifth okay suppose i would get say another value here just for example okay i'm just saying i'm not computing the hash so i was ins inserting 78 again say i was getting the hash as 8 okay and that 78 would come here then just say i was inserting 99 so i was getting hash as 9 okay then 99 would say go here so what is happening these values are getting grouped together they are getting clustered together only at one end of the table the data is getting stored okay the other end of the table there is no data so in other words the keys are not getting spread so that time we call that as primary clustering so linear probing gives rise to one problem known as primary clustering so in primary clustering all the data is getting stored at one end so just like i told you here you can just ignore this first point because you don't know what this is with relation to time and space complexity which you don't know as of now so this second point i just told you what is a cluster cluster means grouping together okay data with the same hash value is getting grouped together then uh, this third point is if a key hashes into a cluster finding a free cell involves going through the entire cluster so basically we saw that when we got 58 okay hash value was 8 so i had to insert 58 here but what i did i could not insert here so i went to the next one then i went to the next key so basically all these keys were part of the cluster they are part of this group the group with the hash value 8 or 9 so whenever i have to insert 58 I have to go to hash eight. I have to go to hash nine. I have to again go to forty nine, whose original hash value was nine. So inserting a new value involves going through the same cluster. Okay, that is the meaning of this third point. Whenever I have to insert sixty nine two, I have to go through this cluster of forty nine and fifty eight. Their hash values were eight and nine. so i to go through this keys so that is the meaning of this third point so again the fourth point i just told you i had taken some values and i told you 
that if I for example I was inserting 88 and the say the hash value was 8 then my cluster would keep on growing okay so that is what I mean by this fourth point and this type of clustering is known as primary clustering so we could have this situation where some portions of the table are having groups of data and other portions of the table is empty now remember our hash table here for in our example that we are taking a very small size is 10 but in a normal life whenever you are using hashing the hash table size will be very huge because it has to store millions of records okay and the sixth point also i mentioned to you we are not spreading the keys uniformly they are all getting grouped together a good hash function should spread the keys across the table okay so basically these are the disadvantages of linear probably so does anyone have any questions about this linear probably is it okay everyone is understood okay then let's go to the next one so to overcome this method of linear probing uh, the disadvantages the disadvantage of that was a primary cluster was getting formed that is the data with the similar hash was getting grouped together okay so to avoid that instead of whenever they came up with something known as quadratic probing so in quadratic probing it works same like linear probing so but when you are finding a free location, when you are finding an empty location, you are going to increment by i square, i raised to 2, instead of i. In linear, linear probing, we were going one location, okay, one location at a time. So in quadratic probing, we will be searching for an empty slot by using this formula, i square. Okay, so to understand that, we will take the same data and the same table same hash function and we'll see how quadratic probing is different from linear probing okay so as long as there is no collision apply this function and insert the data so when you apply the function now i'll do it directly 18 mod 10 you get the hash value is 8 18 is inserted here 19 gets inserted here okay then 20 will get inserted here okay. when you find the hash value for 29 you get the hash as 9 when you get a hash as 9 obviously you can see that a collision has occurred okay when a collision has occurred if it was linear probing then i would have gone here check that this location is not free then i would have gone to the next one so one location at a time i go and i would have inserted 29 here this would have been linear probing but in quadratic probing now what i'll do is i'll start since a collision has occurred i will start with using this formula to find a free slot that is i square okay where i you start with i equal to 0 okay so when you apply the formula with i equal to 0 suppose you get a free slot then your work is done otherwise you put i equal to 1 apply the formula if you find a free slot your job is done or you keep on like this incrementing the value of i and applying this formula okay we'll see it in the next slide how it works so now we are going to find a free slot for 29 okay so we start with i equal to 0 okay now pay attention okay this is where you will get confused the collision has occurred here collision has occurred here hash 9 okay so you apply this formula and this will be your now hash value okay so when you apply this as the hash value 
it will be this zero will not refer to this this zero that you get here will not be referring to this okay when you get zero i'll be referring to this slot okay when i get this zero here zero means this slot so when you check here you will see that this cell is not free that's why i've written here cell is not free okay please pay attention what i'm telling the so next now you will increment this i you will make it as 1 okay so again now apply the formula i square so i square 1 raised to 2 you get as 1 so now this 1 is not this but you will go up here like this in circular fashion this slot will be one this one is here one okay so you can see cell is not free okay so you increment your i value so now i will be two so again two raised to two you get a value as four 2 raised to 2, you get a value as 4. So you write down this value here. This will be 2, 3, 4. So now this 4 here refers to this 4. Okay. So we are referring to this cell now. Check whether it is free. Yes, it is free. So that's why I've written here free. Now 29 will be. Inserted here. Okay, this is the way the insertion will happen. So again, pay attention to what I just told you. When you start with i equal to zero, and you get a value as zero because zero raised to two is zero, you do not refer to this index. Where you will write here zero. this is the cell at which the collision occurred okay so wherever the collision had occurred that cell will be zero then similarly you keep numbering the next cell after collision will be one then you keep numbering it accordingly okay and you going to keep applying this formula till you find a cell as free till you find the cell as free okay now it could so happen it could so happen that your table size is small okay when your table size is small and as you keep using this formula of finding the squares you may get a very large number okay you may get a very large number say you may get the number here as 16 4 to 2 say you reach to this and you get the number as 16 you can see here obviously the size of your table is not equal to this number okay so that time you'll have to use some other method of collision resolution okay so i mean it, it just requires a little common sense you have to look at the size of your table when you decide to use your collision resolution so right now Now, just to understand this method, we are taking this size, and the example has been taken in such a way that all the data will fit within this size of this table. Okay, so whenever you know that your it may not, you may get something like this. You have to use some other method of resolving the collision. Okay. So, any doubts about this quadratic probing? i hope you have understood what is the difference from linear probing any doubts so you can try the next data we have inserted 29 here can you find out the next one 30 what is the index for 
And what is the index for 31? And you can uh, type the answer in the chat for 30 and 31. Yes, Riya, Ashish, Vibhuti, Sejal, Siddesh, Siddhant, Prajwal, all have got the answers correct. And thank you, Jamano, for making this mistake. Okay, this is a mistake. I'll explain this. So please pay attention. Okay, I know how Jamano got this. So uh, just pay attention. Like uh, every time you start with collision resolution in using quadratic probing. You have to start with the value i equal to 0. Okay? You cannot start with the previous value of i. So, so I think Jamano may have used the previous value of i and he has made an error. Okay? So basically what you have to do is now you are resolving for 30. Okay? So the original hash value when you use the hash function, this is your hash function. When you use this hash function, you will get a uh, will get the hash as 0 okay and you can see that it's a collision therefore you will apply quadratic probing so you start with i equal to 0 when you apply i equal to 0 you get the hash as 0 so this is that 0 okay cell is not free so you check the next one so you make i equal to 1 find a square you get the hash as 1 this is that one okay check the cell is free yes cell is free so 30 will be inserted there okay now you go to insert the next key that is 31 when you try to insert 31 and if a collision occurs you will start again with value of i equal to 0 you will not continue with this value of i okay please note it so i think jamano has continued from here and he has made a mistake so please remember that whenever a collision occurs and you're using quadratic probing every time you have to start with value of i equal to zero and then keep incrementing it and remember to square that whatever value of i you get so when you get this 31 obviously now this is causing a collision because 30 has got inserted here so again you start quadratic probing so when you start quadratic probing this is that zero okay the collision had occurred at this point here at one okay then you increment i and check whether that cell is free so when you check this is that one this one is here and you insert your 31 there so is it okay everyone Jamano I hope you understood anyone else any doubts about this method or the previous one okay so I think these methods are pretty simple, only you need to practice it little, okay? Although it's simple, many of you make errors and you don't get full marks in this, okay? Because you all think it's too easy and then you'll get confused in the exams.
So let's go for the third method. Third method is double hashing. So in double hashing, uh, like the word uh, is mentioning here, double, use two hash functions. Okay. So first hash function is to insert the data or search the data, retrieve the data. And whenever a collision occurs, when you use the first hash function, we try to apply the second hash, hash function to get a, to resolve the collision. So the second hash function is to be only used to solve collision. Please note it down. The so second hash function is to be used only when collision occurs. Otherwise, you don't need to use the second hash function. You only need to use the first hash function. If there is no collision, the second hash function will not be required at all. Just like in your exams, when you're getting your answer book, okay, if you can write your entire paper in one that answer book that you're given of 30 pages, you do not take supplement, okay. But whereas if you cannot fit all the uh, answers that you have in that answer book, then you will ask the teacher for supplements. Simply when a lot of pages are left in your answer book, you do not ask supplements, no. So in the same way, remember that, okay. Second hash function is not to be used if there is no collision. So let's insert this. So I have already inserted where, till where there was no collision, okay. So this is the same problem as the previous example. So I have just done it directly. So if any questions here, we are using only the first hash function. Okay. Keep inserting as long as there's no collision. As you can see here, because there are two hash functions, this name of this function is given as H1. The second one name is given as H2. Okay. Uh, sometimes in exams, these functions may not be given to you all. Okay. As a programmer, uh, you may be needed to define these functions. So, like I told you yesterday when you're studying the division uh, method of computing the hash function, this one is quite common key mod m. Okay. You can just remember the second one, it will help you. Suppose in the exams, they don't give you a hash function. So I think till here, everyone is clear. We have been doing this from the yesterday. So you keep applying as long as there's no collision, you just use the first hash function. Okay. Now, again, when I'm inserting 29, that is my fourth key. Again, I'm using the first hash function only. Okay. This is H1. So when I apply the first hash function, I get a hash value as 9. When I go to insert here, I get a collision. So when you get a collision, you apply your second hash function. So you are applying the second hash function to find a free slot for 29, your key 29. So now you're going to apply your second hash function. Okay. And your second hash function is this one. So what is R? R is normally a prime number smaller than the table size. So you know your table size, your hash table is size is of 10. So you're going to apply a prime number or R is normally a prime number which is smaller than the table size. So you can take any prime number. So in this case, I have taken R as 7. Okay. You could have taken any other prime number smaller than 10. So apply this hash function that is there. So you will apply it like this. 29 mod 7. So 29 mod 7 answer will be 1. So you will get 7 minus 1. Answer is 6. So that means you are going to insert 29 at hash 6. So 29 will come here.
okay the same way you have to apply uh, you have to do it for inserting 30 and 31 so remember first you have to always apply the first hash function when you apply the first hash function if you get a collision then you will apply the second hash function only if there is a collision but first you are going to take and apply the first hash function so can you try 30 and 31 and tell me where the data will get inserted so uh, i'll just continue uh, you can check your answers so 30 mod 10 you will get zero which is a collision so you will use the second hash function so when you apply the second hash function you will get the hash value as 4 so 30 will be inserted at index 4 similarly for 31 when you apply the hash function you will get hash value as 1 there is no collision so 31 will directly be inserted at index 1 okay how you are getting 5 Have I done some calculation mistake? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct. Ah, uh, it should be five. Yes, seven minus two is five. Correct. Yes. i made a mistake in this calculation uh, calculating here so it should be 5 and 30 will be getting inserted at 5 yes this is wrong 30 is not at 4 but at 5 so you can just correct this that 30 will not be here but 30 will be here okay so is it okay so again uh, there is a question that when a table gets full what can you do okay so for example quadratic probing and all the will fail or linear probing may fail or double hashing may fail so that time we may have to build another table that is bigger than the original table and then you may have to use some new hash function to insert the data from the old table to the new table so that concept is known as rehashing okay so that is normally done when the table gets full the original hashing table gets full so that time you will build a second table which is obviously has to be bigger than the first table and then you have to use some new hash function to insert the data from the old table to the new table
okay so now we were looking at all these methods like you can see here i on purpose i mentioned is open addressing method 3 so all these methods that we were studying were under open addressing so linear probing quadratic probing double hashing okay so these are the open addressing methods and then we saw if some problem occurs because the table becomes full then we have to do something known as rehashing so coming over to the fourth method of collision resolution that is known as separate chaining so separate chaining is not coming under open addressing methods right so separate chaining makes use of something known as a linked list that we have already studied so basically what we do is in open addressing we insert the keys with the same hash value in some other locations so all the say 10 20 30 may have hash value as zero we insert them in any free slots that are available but here we make use of a linked list to make sure that the keys are attached to the same address okay so we do not attach the keys with the same hash value in different places okay so for example this is the way it would have been done for this data so you are having this data suppose 23 13 21 14 7 8 and 15 and you are having this hash function and the size of the table is say 7 So this is your hash table of size seven, okay? And then you're finding the hash of each of this data. So, for example, you find out the hash of twenty-three, and you get it as two. So you will insert twenty-three here as a linked list. Single link list. So you can see here, twenty three has been inserted at two, and this node has been set to null. Okay, this is actually null. Okay. Then I find out the hash for the next. I get for thirteen. I get a hash as six. I insert thirteen at six as a single link list. So this is again null. I find out for twenty one hash is zero. I insert twenty one here. Okay, so this will be set to null. Right now, you don't look at this part. Okay, this is not yet there, so just don't look at this part. So this will be set to null. This will not be there. Okay, then you find out hash value for fourteen. You get zero again. So again, you can say at zero, twenty one is already there. so in some other method that we had studied previously we would have gone to the next location found and all here we don't do that so this was null so i create a new node i create a new node here okay i create a new node i insert this key there put in and i will make this as null okay then for the next key 7 i get index as 0 again it's a collision so in that case again what i do i insert one new node here i insert 7 in that and the next part i make it as null okay so this is the way i keep doing so as long even if the same index comes the hash value comes and the collision is occurring i keep inserting one new node at the end and i keep adding the nodes at the same index So, twenty-one, fourteen, seven had the index hash value as zero. So I maintain a single link list at that index. Okay, and similarly for the others, you can see here eight and fifteen also I get hash value as one. So first I insert this key eight, and I would have set this as null. Okay. Then when I insert fifteen, again I get hash value as one, which results in a collision. So in that case, what I do, I insert one new node here at the same index one, 
and I put 15 there because its hash value is 1. 8 and 15 are both having hash value as 1. And this is the way we solve collisions in separate chaining. So, any questions about this? Is it okay? You all understood? Separate chaining? You can just read this slide about the differences about separate chaining and open addressing. So these are some of the disadvantages of separate chaining. In the exams, it may be referred to as chaining or separate chaining. It means the same thing. Okay. Any doubts uh, before we conclude? Uh, so, for double hashing, how to choose value of R? Yeah. So, uh, like I mentioned, R should be a prime number, and uh, it's the size. Uh, the value of R should be less than the size of the table. So, in our example that we had seen, the table size was ten. Okay. Table size was ten. And uh, we chose a prime number which is less than that, less than that. So I choose R as 7. Yes, Saish, you can take any of those. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll tell you about your course file. Uh, yeah, yeah, about your file, I'll tell you. So, uh, have you understood about hashing, everyone? Should I? Could you show the previous slide again? Which is the previous slide, Ruben? The last slide, this one. This one or this one? Hello, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, this is the example of separate chaining. Yes, sir. Yes, this one. Yes. Okay. Okay, sir. Thanks. Goodbye. In the exams, if you're given this problem on separate chaining, you'll have to solve it something similar to this. Okay, you, you need not draw the calculations and the table, uh, this uh, diagram side by side, like I've shown you on the slide. You can draw this diagram at the below this after the calculations. But if you want, you can show it side by side, not a problem.
हेलो यस यस सर डा थैंक यू ओके सो आई स्टॉप द रिकॉर्डिंग आई थिंक एंड जस्ट गिव यू अ ब्रीफ